The Innovators is brought to you by the Jamaica Yellow Pages. What will you discover today? Columbus Business Solutions, the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, The Gleaner, Future Services International, and Silver Star Motors. Innovators Yannick Page and Gary Matalin. Over the next several weeks, they'll be helping aspiring and struggling entrepreneurs to make more money. Yannick Page launched her first business at age 17 and knows how to start a business on a shoestring budget. She's a certified trainer in entrepreneurship and workforce innovation and is also the founder of the award-winning company, Future Services International. Gary Matalin is the co-founder and director of New Stone Limited. This successful entrepreneur is also the co-founder of KLE Group, owners and operators of Fiction Lounge and Usain Bolt's Tracks and Records. This week, they will be joined by guest innovator, Chef Brian Lumley, the youngest chef to ever win the coveted Taste of Jamaica Chef of the Year Award. Brian, Yannick, today we have a very interesting case. I think you're going to be ex extremely interested in this one. It's um, Patrick Wallace. He's a chef okay. and he is the proprietor of Sean's Restaurant. So let's take a look at this video and we'll see what it's all about. My name is Sean Patrick Wallace. And the name of my business is Sean Restaurant and Grill. Yes, of course, I have a rough childhood. I started working at 15 years old. I try and, and pursue a career in chef, and that put me right here on the spot now, where I can own a little business for myself. It's hard opening my business. I've I faced a lot of challenges, still facing a lot of challenges. I don't finish pay for some of the things. Business is extremely slow now. I can't afford to pay a full rent, so I pay it in half. I will never give up, never give up, must live up. Keep on fighting, keep surviving. I've had the privilege of actually having Sean cook for me at my home. And that was the reason why I told him that he needed to go and have himself into a business. In terms of affordability of Sean food, extremely affordable. I think sometimes it's too cheap, but I understand the situation within the context of where he lives and the location. I want the innovators to help me with so much liquor things. I want them to help me with um, getting a spot, finding a, a nice location and advertise. All right. If only we could taste this food right now, right? Yeah, that would be good. All right, let's meet Patrick. I'm going inside now, and I'm really, really excited. Patrick, Hi. Welcome. welcome. Have a seat, have a seat. So Patrick, yeah, give me a little background. You opened a restaurant in August last year. Yes. You're yes. in Seaview Gardens? Yes, that's the location I opened. Okay, but the vision for what you want is, tell me what the vision is, I sell want, it to me. I want to go out. I find myself five years from now, maybe having two restaurants. I know I can do that, I just want help and I can push myself to the top. As I read so far, I know I can go further. Is that where you live? You live in TV? Yes, I live so in TV. So you just really started in your backyard? Yes, Because yes. you don't have the money to really go No, I don't anywhere. have the money, I don't have But the Patrick, money. here is a problem I have with you straight out. We couldn't reach you because you didn't have a phone. We couldn't send you an email because you don't have an email address. So right away, you lock yourself off from many opportunities, you know. Because if you don't have a phone and you don't have an email address, how are people going to communicate with you? How am I going to find you? I can't just drive, come to see you guys every time I want, Patrick. Right now I'm working on a Facebook page and I'm working on a cell phone. So very soon I will have them up and running. So where did you get your training? Well, I got my training um, at the Chinese restaurant on Redos Road. I started working at a Chinese restaurant early too about for eight to nine years and leave on going to Devon House that is Namas on the Terrace. That's where I get the real experience. Not that Chinese don't good enough, but 
that's where I, I learned to do a lot of stuff. Late Norma Shirley was yes. just an amazing culinary talent that Jamaica had. Yes. Just a gem. So if you learn from her, yes. then that means that yeah, I think so. Learn something, yeah. Um, Patrick, I have a question for you. Are you pretty well known in your community? People know you? Yes, pretty well known. You've ever asked them what they'd like to eat? Well, yes I do. They want, they want to eat the food, but food is excellent, but I'm, I'm, I'm not getting the money for it. Down here in Seaview Gardens, it, it's a little bit challenging with the cost for the food. Because if I go out and I buy a hoisting sauce to make a Chinese roast chicken, I'm paying actually $400 plus tax. And that is just for a small bottle. When I come back now and I roast the chicken, I have to sell it on the average. So that is, that is some of the challenges that I have to face. Sean restaurant is the best. The price, reasonable. And if we don't have it, we still give it to eat. You're passionate about top quality ingredients, and we love that. But sometimes the best of the best, you may have to actually find an alternative because you will not be viable if you are insisting on finding the best quality ingredients for a market that just cannot afford it. Still to come on the innovators. I really get a winner. But then I have them really $1,000 a week and come a chance, come buy a food. To have a sustainable business and to stay on top of your game, you have to innovate, you have to be sharp. And to do that, training is so important. You have to continuously be learning. You yourself as an individual have to be looking to, to pick up on the next big thing. Um, I myself, after high school, went on to university. After university, went on to do my master's. After that, went on for project management training. It's just continuously learning and every time I went to that next level on, on the theoretical side, it took my business to another level on the practical side. Very important, continuously learn. So Patrick, in terms of marketing, promoting yourself, what are you doing now to get yourself out there? I'm not advertising right now because I don't have the facility to advertise. Things is extremely slow down there. You know, I really get a winner. But then I have them really one thousand a line at a week and come a chance, come buy a food when them can cook something else and everybody have a meal. So it's really on weekend. You know, I will really have a fast day, depend on the day. And on a weekend, when you have a fast day, how much money do you take home in your hand? I take home like about $15,000 and I have to pay rent out of it. This is a, this is a big challenge for us, but I think we're more than ready. What we're going to do now is to have a discussion to see exactly what we need to do to get you on the path to success so that you're not struggling and that you can really try to enjoy life of course, while putting in the hard work, right? So give us a little time and we'll invite you back in. Really, thank God we have the celebrity yes. chef Brian Lovely with us because let me tell you something, this one is, is difficult. I mean, the reality is he just doesn't have a business right now at no. this point in time. But Brian, you know how critical it is for menu selection when you're, when you're setting no, up course. a restaurant and understanding your input, your, your costs, uh, your cost of sales and, right. and pricing the menu for your market and I don't think he's even begun that. Yeah, that right. That's part of it and that really should be a starting point. The, the food costs are very, very, very critical to our business. For him, you know, a couple of things has to happen. Yes, he's weak on the, the startup capital, but he, um, he needs a market. He understands, he seems to understand his market, but he's a very passionate chef. He, he wants to do this gourmet thing, and I remember that. I, I always admire that and love that. But you need to do something to get there. You need to work towards it. You, know, you can't change the market that easily. So he needs to assess um, what he wants to do. Um, he can still do the gourmet Chinese sauce, but on a different product, a chicken neck or right. something. Like grill. I mean, there are people who love certain things but you want to buy the convenient food where you can't necessarily afford it. So he needs to just fix up a cheaper product. Part of this guy's problem is that he's totally unknown. He's known in his community, which is great, but you know, his vision is to actually get out there. And he, you know, he's, he keeps saying it. I think his goal is to get out of his community and we're gonna try and pull him back. But how were you able to get out there as a young chef? and now you're so well known. What I did, and I don't do it differently from a lot of other people, 
It's just that I volunteer. I say yes to everything. If somebody asks or needs a favor, I just say yes, I just go. And from that, I meet people, and I meet people, and I meet people, and, and from one group to the next to the next. So what I think he needs to do is, he needs to propel himself out there, put on a fish fry, and just make sure that you nail it. You only get one shot. Mm -hmm. You have to nail it the first time. When you nail it the first time, people say, well, having a birthday, mm -hmm. come and do this birthday, and you nail it again. Mm -hmm. And then somebody recommend you and say, well, well look at Chef Vinci, you guys will not go hire a chef to come in the community. Right. We have one, and from your community, your movement, because I mean, when you realize how people are networked, it's amazing. Yeah. A cousin, an auntie at this, and they live here, and you nail it again, and mm -hmm. the people say, no, man, the chef, we can call word of mouth. It's the strongest marketing tool. Patrick, welcome back. Have a seat, man. So listen, we had a chance to talk about your case a bit. The, the thing that I want to start off with is that any entrepreneur starting any venture needs to really work through the concept properly. And that's no different with a restaurant. And when you talk about developing a concept for your restaurant, the menu creation and menu development is absolutely critical. What I think has happened is that you, your passion for cooking and your passion for, for you know, your artistry, that is something that is drawing you to do something that doesn't fit in with the market that you're that you're servicing at this point in time. Yeah, and I mean, you know, just to break that down, what we're saying is, instead of trying to do a whole chicken, look at chicken back, look at chicken neck, look at turkey neck, and I, I could I could see your face already. You look so down when I'm telling you chicken back and those things. But the truth is, you have to focus on what your market can afford, and you your job is to make those foods so appealing, so different, so unique that people will buy and not question, but at an affordable price. The other thing is that you have to get connected. You say you want to move out of your community, that will come later. But in order for you to do that, you need cell phone, you need internet, right? So you have to get connected. You have to have an email address, a Facebook page, because eventually people will want to reach you. And there is no way that if you're not connected, they can reach you. So you close yourself off to every opportunity. There are a lot of jerk chicken men out there. One very successful, um, person, I see, take a case of chicken neck and it's just that himself on every Friday until he had to spread it to every Thursday, Friday, Saturday because they finish in no time. Kids after school buy it, people on the road buy it. They're not necessarily buying these things for dinner, it's just something to snack on, right? And you start there, you get the money that you need to, to sustain the business. That's what you really need now. Then you kind of service your ambition when you start to go out. You do a little catering, you want to show off a little bit, then you have the money to buy more expensive meats to show off to that kind of crowd. But you can't look to be serving filet mignon for chicken back money. You're going to make a loss. Those are your assignments. We are ready to send you off and we wish you good luck. We know that when you come back here, you must have some good news for us. I just want to lift myself up. And the best way forward is the way that Yannick and Gary says. So I'm going to work with them. It's now time for the assignments. Well, today I've gone forward and I'm going to do a basic uh, simple dish that will be cost effective for an operation that you will have. All right, so I have um, stew beef that will be served with a mashed potato and a fire cracker slaw. Fire cracker slaw, why? It's mostly cost effective for you, all right, and the customers. So it has a lot of flavor and varying cost. So I'll go ahead and actually plate one for you, and then you can actually plate one. So typically, you know that you put a garnish on it. All right, lots of garnish, it costs. Yeah. So today doing a garnish with everything, your parsley and all that. Mm -hmm. The colors that are actually on this plate by itself is actually a garnish in itself. Yeah, so therefore you don't need to actually put another garnish on the plate. Therefore you save in cost. So it's your turn to just actually try it out yeah. and from there. What I must identify though, to look at this plate here and this plate here. This has less products and this has more thereby you're giving away your products to the customer because there's an inconsistency there. You've plated a lot more beef as opposed to what I had there. All right, so basically you, you plating more, you'll have to absorb that cost. So you could have been making a profit from that. 
well, no, you have to take that cost and pay for it because you've given that away. So based on your recipe costing, everything has to be consistent. So be sure to find out who your customers are. Once you, you can find out that by doing questionnaires, people who actually come in, you find out what they truly would like to get from your operation, mm -hmm. right? Find out who are your core um, personnel and what they want to get from your restaurant. You have other places around, um, around um, shops are that food places around, will add upwards other things. What do they have over you? Mm -hmm. All right, you need to find out that. And once you've achieved that, which is your core market, trust me, you don't have hands to sell food. Coming up on The Innovators, I thank my family for the support that they give to me, friends, neighbors, and well-wishers. Last season, in terms of likes on my Facebook page, after the show, yeah, I got a lot of likes, and uh, people are really encouraged, and people love it. Let's find out what Melanie has been up to since last season. Last year was a trying season where I have to travel all around to show my product. Now we are located at shop number eight, Matilda's Corner Plaza. Now we are doing even uniform and dresses. I should say thanks to the innovators, to my customers, to my Facebook page fan. It's now time for Patrick to return to the boardroom and update the innovators. Patrick, good to see you again. Have a seat. So, a lot has happened since we last saw you. Give us an update. Well, a lot has happened. I went to JBDC. Hi Patrick, welcome to the JBDC Small Business Expo. No, I would like you to tell me a little bit about what you are doing. I operate a little small business bookshop mm -hmm. in Silio Garden, mm -hmm. where I cook all different types of food, Chinese, local, Italian and international. No, that sounds exciting. In Seaview Gardens, you say? Yes. I think one thing that you need to do is really get a business plan. This template really gives you an idea of how you can go about creating a simple business plan. It gives you a guide as to where you want to take your business and the cost of getting your business there. All right, Sean, so here's a form that we're going to ask you to complete and we're going to set an appointment with you to come in to our location at Camp Road. I believe that while we are there, we'll be able to go through more information that will get you on your road to being a successful entrepreneur. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in and all Thanks the best. So we are waiting to meet you. Next thing, I, I went to Jackson Records where I met, I met a nice, a, a beautiful chef, you know? <laughs> and, she, and she showed me, she teach me, and she showed me how, how to make money in small portions. Sound good, I mean, because, you know, you were very concerned when we told you that you have to look for cheaper ingredients, because yes. in this market, people really are paying attention to price, you know? So how do you feel about looking at cheaper ingredients, I mean? I feel good about cheaper ingredients. Um, me myself know that I have to, uh, them always to take your hand and make fashion. Because it's not the, we, the real cheaper ingredient, but what you get out of the ingredient. Right. Patrick, last time you come in, I didn't have a phone. Do you have a way for us to find you because you don't even have a cell phone, no email address? How is that? Well, I actually set, in, set up an email address right at this moment. Um, Sean's Restaurant and Grill at gmail.com. What about the cell phone? Well, I actually have a cell phone, but it's not working properly. So if you call, you're going to hear on and off because something wrong with the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so good luck, Patrick. I mean, we're really proud of you. We wish you all the best. Looking for big things from you. Thank you. You know, I can tell you, food and beverage industry is very challenging. There's a lot of elements that need to come together to make it successful. Number one, the concept, putting together the concept. I mean, Patrick is a very talented chef and you know, he has that creative energy and he, he wants to create great meals. But to be a successful business, you have to get all of the parts of the, the, the pie together. And, and, and that really means the definition of the concept. It means standardization of, of his processes, his, 
his um, production. I think what has happened is since he's been here and he's gone out and he's done the assignments, he's seen a lot more of what it takes for that to all come together. So I think he definitely has a lot of work to do ahead of him. And, you know, he has the, the skill sets already in place. So it's just for him to stick with it. Stick with the plan and he'll make it happen. Patrick, I wish you all the best. Jamaica is a tough environment. All the mentors have given you great advice and I just want you to really listen to what we have to say. The business side of it is very, very important as well. So you have to really structure yourself in order to um, make the best out of your environment. The good thing about it is that Jamaica and people never stop eating. As Jamaicans, we love our belly. It don't matter from the most expensive type of food to the lowest commodity. You just have to find your market and go straight through. Sky's the limit, bro. You keep hearing people say this is a tough environment. Yes, it is. So what? We all have to survive. Is it possible for you to start a business and make money in this environment? It is. And Patrick is proof of that. But remember that nobody rises suddenly in the world, not even the sun. So at the end of the day, it's a process for him. What does Patrick have to do now? Technology training and really getting the business fundamentals right at the end of the day you have to listen to the market look at what the market wants it doesn't make sense you give the market something that they're not asking for because you're going to lose money so i think that patrick is definitely on his way he has talent raw talent he has passion for his food and as everybody knows jamaican people love to eat so Good luck to Patrick in the future, and I really hope that he does well. Patrick celebrated with a few family and friends after completing his assignments. My life and no milk, only your syrup, and me your work, I still me not give up. I know I'm gonna be okay one day. I thank Gary and Yannick for the exposure, innovator and a whole. I thank everybody for helping me. I know that I'm on my way to, um, to success. I know my business will work out. I thank my family for the support that they give to me, friends, neighbors, and well-wishers. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. The boardroom table and chairs were provided by the Corporate Interiors International Limited. We sell solutions, not just furniture. Gary's wardrobe was provided by Max Brown Limited. Next time on The Innovators. The aim of the company though, the main thing that I want to do is to bring a sense of unity to the cleaning industry, especially on the household level. I do not see how she's able to scale this business, to grow the business, unless she has somebody dedicated to working in that business. For further information on any of our assignments, please visit us at facebook.com slash innovators TV or email us at innovators TV at gmail.com. The Innovators was brought to you by the Jamaica Yellow Pages. What will you discover today? Columbus Business Solutions, the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, The Gleaner, Future Services International, and Silver Star Motors. The Innovators is brought to you by the Jamaica Yellow Pages. What will you discover today? Columbus Business Solutions, the Jamaica 